In this video for Chat Physics 2022, I'm going to be talking about using Lego to build understanding in physics. My name is Lewis Matheson, and you can also find me on Twitter at Lego Physics Guy. The reason that I started using Lego in my own physics teaching was I saw this amazing resource from Queen Mary University where they had these yellow 2x2 two two blocks representing protons and these red 2x2 two two blocks representing neutrons. And they had a guy that explained fission and fusion for students. So I kind of got involved, I made my own large nucleus and then I was using this with my teaching. I found when I was teaching GCSE, the topic on atoms was often a bit dry, and apart from maybe demonstrating some radioactive sources, most of the time I was just writing stuff on the board that students would copy down. By using Lego, which is something that all students have, uh, have an experience of and they know what it is, it's something that they can actually get hands on, and it's a really nice thing that you can use for demonstrations and small bits of classwork. In this video, I'm going to show you some other ideas that you could use with your own students using Lego to model the world around us. And also, I'm going to talk about how you can buy some for your school and also how you can manage its use in the classroom. Now, before we get onto the subatomic physics, let's just think about solids, liquids and gases. I'm just going to use these blue pieces here and we can represent a solid. We can have a liquid uh, in a container or we could have a gas where the particles are much more spread about. And this is something that I think students could immediately understand the difference in the material properties. In actual fact, we could even delve into the, the regions that normally chat chemistry talk about. If we had, uh, we're just going to tip out some of these particles here, we might think about um, other things dissolving. So maybe we have some salt and we can see that these can easily fit in the gaps in, uh, between the water molecules. Or potentially we have some sand, which is much bigger and therefore you could separate this by filtration, by using a certain size filter. And I think the advantage of modelling it with Lego is that people can get hands-on, students can do this in small groups, and also it's a lot more, I suppose it develops rather than just having this diagram on the board which is quite static. So Lego can be used across all levels, uh, and I'm sure there's some uses for biology as well. Now the reason I found this really useful in particular was GCSE, looking at atomic physics. So this is my nucleus of an atom. And I suppose we can think about uh, maybe this nucleus here. This one has four yellow bricks and it's got three red bricks. So this one must be beryllium because it has four protons. Now it's a little bit difficult to see, but what we could do is we could take the same blocks and just put them in a column like this. You could then maybe discuss other sorts of atomic nuclei, which look like this. And we can see all of these have the same height column of protons. So these are all the same element, but they have a different number of neutrons. And this is a nice way to introduce the idea of isotopes. The other thing that you can do is, um, and I'm using these particles here, uh, just these one by one pieces in grey. These are going to represent the electrons. So again, you might think about the atomic structure where, again, you have these electrons where the number of electrons is going to be equal to the number of protons. And again, this is something that you could have a big stack of Lego that students can help themselves to, and they can make different sorts of atoms or even ions. Something which I found quite useful was uh, when we were discussing radioactive decay. Um, this is something which is emitted from the nucleus of an atom, uh, and you might have alpha decay, which is two protons and two neutrons, or you have an electron emitted from the nucleus of the atom. And this is when one of the neutrons changes into a proton, and it also gives out this high-speed electron. So again, we can model uh, the large alpha particle, the smaller beta particle, and this thing here, which isn't a particle, which might be our gamma radiation. Now, if you want to go beyond the level of GCSE, there's many ways that you can do that. So here we have, again, our proton and our neutron. What we can actually do is think about some of the fundamental particles that make these up. And I'm just going to use um, some of these smaller plates to represent the up and the down quark. And we can then show that the neutron is an actual fact made out of three quarks. Uh, we've got two up and a down or the neutron is made out of two downs and an up. And we've just developed that model further. In actual fact, I have other sorts or other flavours of a quark in here. I also have extra particles, not just for the electron, but for the muon and the tau particle. And then we have our electron neutrino and so on. So what you can actually do is start to build up this whole standard model of physics just using Lego. 
And again, I also have these smaller uh, colorful bits here, which represent different colors of photons. So at A-level, we can then think about the particle-like properties of light. You can also use Lego to show the electrostatic force of repulsion, the fact that two positive charges are going to repel. And if I hold this proton here near to this proton, as I move it closer, there's this repulsive force. Uh, and I did that, and if you're a real fan of Lego, don't listen, but you can alter it and maybe just scrape out the insides, put in the magnet, and once you've glued that in, you can then have the magnets repelling each other. So you can show how protons don't really want to be next to other protons, and it's a strong nuclear force that takes over when these two get close enough. And again, that can lead on to the discussion of how fusion takes place and why you need high pressures and high temperatures. So that's a few ways to model and visualize the world that we can't actually see. But Lego can also be used in the classroom to bring your normal demonstrations and your examples to life. How many times have you drawn on the board uh, maybe a picture of a rocket and the forces involved? Well, why not just make it out of Lego? You could stick it to the board with a bit of blue tack and you can then draw the forces acting on it or maybe the forces acting on a skydiver. Of course, if you want to go really big, Lego do have a great range of stuff that you can build or even get your students to build in a science club, which again can bring your classroom to life. Something I found uh, quite recently was that um, Lego is quite adaptable. Here I just have a block made out of Lego and I've got uh, a mass which I can hang over the edge of the bench. bench. Now you can do this using uh, other items, but Lego is quite adaptable. And when I let it go, it moves to the edge and then it stops. And this is a great question that you can pose to your students. Why is it when I let it go, it starts moving? And why does it always stop before it gets to the edge? And this is a great way to introduce the idea of components of force. And as it gets closer to the edge, the angle between the thread and the desk gets bigger, and therefore the component of horizontal force of tension gets smaller, as well as the frictional force between this and the desk getting bigger. So you can use Lego uh, for some really quite high level thinking. The final thing I'd like to show you uh, was inspired by a project called Binding Blocks from the University of York, and they made this amazing Lego NZ graph. Now, normally, this might only be covered in year 13 physics, but what they did was they had this large model that showed all of the stable isotopes in black, and then different colours of Lego represented different sorts of radioactive decay. So I decided to build my own. I did it a quarter of the size of theirs because I only use these one by one Lego pieces. And we have the nuclear valley down here. And again, the height is related to the binding energy per nucleon. And what we have is a region where we have the stable isotopes in black. We've got different colors uh, representing different sorts of beta decay. We have yellow, which represents alpha decay, and it's when you go to the top end of this chart that you see much more yellow and even green that shows alpha emission or spontaneous fission. So even though we're using Lego, we can use this to show really difficult concepts, but you could use this NZ chart even at GCSE level because it shows to students that you have stable isotopes and some isotopes to become more stable either emit beta radiation if they're quite light or alpha radiation if they're quite heavy. So how do you order lots of Lego that you can use in your school? Well, the best thing to do is to go to the Lego website and they've got a section there called pick a brick. And that means you can select the right color, the right size and any quantity that you want to be delivered to your school. And the advantage of Lego is that it's gonna outlive your teaching career. It's gonna be in your classroom for the next 20 or 30 years. In terms of managing Lego in the classroom, there's really two options. One way, is that you maybe just uh, unload all of the Lego into a Gratnall's tray uh, and you hope most of it comes back at the end of the lesson. There might be a few bits which go missing which end up on the floor or occasionally uh, ending up in pencil cases and you just accept the loss. Another way that you can do it, uh, which might be a little bit more time consuming but it means that you'll get everything back that you handed out, is to make up little Lego kits which you give to your students and then that means at the end of the lesson, the Lego that they got in their small groups you can put it back into the packet. You can easily count the different colors and uh, how much you actually handed out at the beginning. And this means you're far less likely to lose bits of Lego. But ultimately, it's just like having any other equipment in the lab. You count it out, you count it in, uh, and occasionally uh, a few bits might get damaged, but overall you should end up with what you handed out at the beginning. So those were just a few ideas about ways that you can use Lego in your teaching to model the world around us and help students build their understanding. If you'd like to find out more from me, I do have uh, a YouTube channel called Physics Online and also a website where I've put loads more resources and there'll be a link to those in the description beneath this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.